Well, God bless you. Praise the Lord. To everyone that are tuning in, amen, on all of the podcasts that we're on out there, this is the General of Deliverance Podcast. And we're bringing you a message today. And we will be talking about two conversations that will go nowhere. Knowing when what you say changes nothing. Now, I want to say to all of you out there, not only do I, am I a minister, but I'm also a counselor. I have a counseling business. And when I say it is a business, it is a counseling business where people, amen, go on, online, they sign up, they pay for my time to give counseling in marriage, spiritual warfare, workplace issues, relationship issues, amen. It is full-blown counseling. And I know I get a lot of flack. Folks fall almost out and almost roll on the floor. So they say he's charging for someone to get delivered. My dear friend, I am a counselor. I am doing counseling. And if someone signs up for counseling that is related to deliverance, yes, ma'am, there is a charge for my time. Yes, sir, I will engage the spirits because I have that skill as well as wisdom in counseling in other areas. Now, at my church, at a church service, amen, you're welcome to come to Delaware at our church and you can get deliverance and you don't even have to give an offer. You just come, walk up in the line, amen, and get delivered. But this is not all I do. I'm saying this to all of those haters that just keep jumping on my YouTube. How do you charge for counseling? I do full-fledged counseling. And it's not just deliverance. As you will see tonight, that the message that I'm about to share is not a message on deliverance. It is a message in the series that I deal with is Wisdom Keys, How to Deal with People. Now, as I said, I'm talking about tonight two types of conversations that go nowhere. And I'm sure some of you have had these experiences where you have had conversations that actually go nowhere. No matter what you do, it's nothing you're saying is helping. Amen? So I'm going to come out of share stream and bring up the actual message. By the way, I do want to thank every single one of you that have either cashed up or a donation of any size. And if you do not feel led to do that, that is just fine. Just listen and learn from the message. But let me give some insight. Once again, this message tonight, amen, is dealing with, hallelujah, understanding when you're talking to someone. There are two conversations that will go nowhere. And knowing when you say, knowing that when what you say changes nothing. I'm going to slow it up and read it again. Two conversations that will go nowhere. Knowing when what you say changes nothing. Do you know sometimes we waste time talking to people? Sometimes you need to realize that what people get up with you for or talk to you about, sometimes they already have a preconceived notion already. Now let's jump right into this. And we're going to look at one of my favorite passages of scripture. That's St. John chapter 2, verse 23 through 25. And the first conversation that goes nowhere is when you see clearly they're not with you. Are you hearing me? There are people that will have conversations with you, but they're not with you. Now, Jesus encountered this. Matter of fact, Jesus encountered lots of people that would come to him for what they wanted. Let's look at this, and I'm going to break this down, and you're going to get some insight on it. Now, I'm going to tell you something. My teaching tonight is about how to set boundaries when you're dealing in a conversation with someone that no matter what you say, they are not changing. They already have their preconceived notion of you and what they want out of you. I'm going to show you how to set some boundaries. Now, looking at St. John chapter 2, verse 23. Now, when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover and the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. But check this out. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men. Now, this is powerful. It says that Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew where they were coming from. This word commit, as you see here in the notes, is pistua, and it means to have faith in them. 
to entrust them, especially one's spiritual well-being to Christ. So Jesus did not commit himself to some because he knew what was in them. Look what it says here. This word commit also means to put. It means to trust or to put in with trust. Now, you, many of you out here that are listening at me right now, you have talked to people and you know that just the way that they're engaging you, you can tell and discern in your spirit that this person, really, I can't commit my, themself, myself to them because they have an arterial motive or they already have a preconceived idea of what they feel and think about you. Listen, don't y'all go sitting around thinking that everybody that contacts you, everybody that wants to be around you actually believes in you. Don't you fool yourself. One of the things I learned strong in being in ministry, counseling, and social media is don't get shocked at who really isn't with you. Just build your life to finish what your goal is in God and in life. Look what it says. Now, when he was in the Passover at the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. Translation, many believed in his name when they saw what they could get out of it. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men. Many of these same people that were excited at the Passover when they saw him would be the same crowd saying, crucify him. God, have you ever had times in your life, listen to me, where it looked like people were on your side? Yep, they were with you, you thought. As soon as the wind changed, soon as they got around certain types of people, they turn on you. My God, listen, I'm going to tell you something. It hurts. It breaks your spirit because it disarms you. The way that they feel about you and the way that they talk to you, you didn't even know until you actually listened to them. Listen how they engage you. You didn't even know they felt that way about you. But let me tell you all something. Jesus did not commit himself to everybody because there were times that his spirit man would let him know. They're not with you. Listen to what it said here. That he, but he did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men. In other words, he knew where you were coming from. All I need to know, to know that I need to quit fooling with you, is to know where you're coming from. Listen at this. And he needed not that any should testify a man because he knew what was in man. The great poet Maya Angelou said it like this. When people show you who they really are, Believe them the first time. I'm going to take time right now to really, really stamp this and hit this real hard. Listen to me. There are people, I mean, God is where they're at, whether they're in your family, whether they're on your job, when they show you that they are condescending towards you, when they show you that they don't value you, when they show you by attacking you verbally, realize they're showing you what they feel about you. Now, let's be real. Come on, somebody. Let's be mature and realistic. Is there times that people have issues where they disagree and the enemy gets in it and they talk it over and make up later? Absolutely. In a situation where there's a misunderstanding and y'all can talk it out, the right thing to do is to go to them, yourselves, talk it out, maybe tell them, say, look, is there a problem between us? Because you're kind of acting like there's something wrong between us. But then you've got this class of people, amen, they're not interested in making up with you. They've got it in their mind that they have a certain feeling about you, and they're not changing. Now, so the first type of person that I'm talking about is, is where you talk to them and it go nowhere, and no matter what you say. The first conversation that goes nowhere is when you see clearly they're not with you. You, got, you understand? Stop trying to run after people who are not with you. Look at this. These type of people, some who never listen to any to anyone. Now, here goes the type of people. Now, this is the kind that they ain't listening to you. They already made up their mind what they think and what they feel about you. Now, listen what this definition is. A person like that is someone who never listens to anyone can be described as being unresponsive, dismissive, inattentive, ignorant, or obstinate. 
Did y'all hear me? I'm going to translate it again. You can have someone in your life who will never listen at you. They made up their mind, what they feel about you, and no truth will change it. No pleading will change it. They will not see the good in you. They will not see what you're trying to do. And you need to realize, like Jesus did, stop trying to win them to your life, to your mission. Finish your call. Are you hearing me? Someone who never listens to anyone can be described as unresponsive. They are unresponsive to you. They reject you. They actually are dismissive of, dismissive of you. And when they talk to you, they will talk to you in a dismissive way. They will talk to you. They will show you that they're not attentive. When you try to speak your heart, when you try to say where you're coming from, they don't care because they've already made up in their mind what they feel about you. They've already made up in their mind what they want to say. Amen. Let me go on a little bit further. Praise God. Amen. In the book of First Samuel, chapter 25, that's First Samuel, chapter 25, verse 17 to 19. The second type of situation is when the person is foolish and it can't be told anything. Now, the first person, the first group is they already made their mind up about you. They may not like you or they may like you until they get what they want out of you. Then they dismiss you. The second type is the second type of a person where you're going to get no one with in a conversation is the type of person is the situation is the person is foolish and can't be told anything. You know, in the Bible, there was a man that had this very spirit. His name was Nabal. And David's soldiers had guarded his herd. Now, listen to me real good. His wife was a good woman named Abigail. His servants served them, and they were strong and mighty in money and, and mighty in cattle. But this man was such a foolish man, couldn't nobody tell him nothing. Are y'all hearing me? Listen, now, I'm going to take you into the story. Now, David's, I mean, Abigail's and Nabal's servants knew that David had told Nabal, I've guarded your herd. I protected them. I've never stole anything from you. Just give us something, a little bit something, for how we watched and kept your back. And he said, I ain't giving you nothing. I mean, he went off on David. And the servant heard it and said, oh, my God, this fool. Yeah, they called him a fool. This fool that nobody could tell anything is getting ready to rip the whole house. Yes. This type of person that can't nobody tell nothing usually wrecks others in their perimeter. Look at this. First Samuel 25, 17. Now, therefore, know and consider what thou wilt do, for evil is determined against our master and against all his house. Now, did you get this? This is what happened. It said that evil is determined against our master and the whole house. Good Lord, I'm mercy. In other words, what Nabal was getting ready to do was wreck everybody. When there is someone that you can't tell them nothing, they're obstinate, be it a husband or be it a wife. I'm an equal opportunity preacher. Be it a husband or be it a wife. When you cannot tell them anything, the mistakes they make swallows everybody in. Now look what happened here. Now therefore, knowing, consider what thou would do. For evil is determined against our master and against all his household. For he is such a son of an idol. Now that word son of Belial means worthless man. The spirit of Belial makes a person worthless. You can't talk to them. They're headstrong. They, they, you, they, they're just stubborn. They're obstinate. They got an iron wheel. One time I counseled a celebrity one time that, that I was called in to counsel with. And when I met with this guy, I sat with him before an evening, an entire weekend. I said, this joker got an iron wheel. And when his mind, his head is his, uh, his thick as steel. You can't get through it. And do you know what? That celebrity single-handedly drove his wife away. He destroyed his family. They split up because he was such a son of an owl. Nobody could tell him nothing. And usually, I'm going to say something to some of you counselors out there. Some of you who counsel like I do, you are counselors. You are trained. You deal with marriage counseling. Listen, don't blame yourself when you get a client that won't listen to nobody. But some of y'all are hot, 
Well, I usually ask people when they ask me about marriage counseling or relationship counseling, I said, how many people have you been to? And they'll say, well, I've had about six or seven. And then my question is, what's wrong with y'all? What's wrong with you? That seven people couldn't give you enough wisdom for you to come out of what you're doing. And usually they try to blame it on the counselor. Now, I must say, is it possible that a counselor could uh, not be that good or not not be a, 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 a not be a good fix for you? Yes, yes. I'm not a stupid man. Yes. But let me tell you something. When you had counsel after counsel, when you had person after person try to counsel your marriage, counsel your relationship, give you wisdom and insight, and you don't listen to it, the fault's not the counselor. The fault is yours. You may have a stronghold in your attitude. And I'm not going to blame it all on no demons. I know y'all, we that teach deliverance want the demons to be responsible for every stinking little nasty, uncrucified, mean attitude we operate in. But I'm not playing that game with you because I know that we have to crucify the deeds of the flesh and cast out the devil. And often devils are not the reason why we're doing what we're doing. We're getting devils because of how we do. I'm moving on, y'all. Said it. Chest out. Amen. But listen to me real good. Amen. So many times it may not be the counselor. It may be y'all. It may not be the person trying to give you advice. It may be your head strong and won't take it. That's the way the ball was. Listen to what it says here. Now, therefore, verse 17, 18, and 19. I'm going to read it, then we're going to work this thing. First Samuel 25, 17, 18, and 19. Now, therefore, in knowing, consider what thou wilt do, for evil is determined against us. They can get ready to go through there and kill them all. I'm a master and against all his household, for he is such a son of a liar that a man cannot speak to him. Nobody can tell him anything. Verse 25, 18. Then Abigail made haste. Now watch Abigail. Now I'm going to say something to some of y'all out there. Oh my God, Abigail's getting ready to act like a Jesse. Abigail's getting ready to abdicate her husband's authority. Abigail's getting ready to save that house lest that fool calls everybody to be destroyed. Every now and then, and, and ladies, don't you dare think that I am coming against headship and authority according to the Bible. But I maintain to tell you, you are not dealing with headship when you're dealing with a fool that fits, but that does things through his stubborn head that will not allow nobody to tell him anything, and the whole family is in trouble. And there are many of y'all like that. And by the way, let me help you, ladies and gentlemen. I've seen it in women and men. Where, and that person has such an obstinate, hard headed spirit of belial where nobody can tell him nothing. And you try to go, honey, this is messing the kids up. Honey, you need to bring this in. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> and mess around and mess up the whole house. Just so happened in this chapter, the word of God was exposing a fool named about neighbor. And he was getting ready to destroy the whole house. Now, some of y'all may can take this man out. But you know what I found in, about church folk? Now, listen, I'm a church folk. Did you hear me? Elder Vincent, how you doing, Elder Vincent Shockley? How you doing, my man? Love you. Yeah, God bless you, man. I'm going to say something, Elder Vincent. You better pray for me because I'm getting ready to say it. Listen, the trouble with church folks is they don't want to deal with reality. Sometimes church folk want someone to say what they want to hear when their actions are proving the total difference than what the Bible requires. Then let me go on and finish this thing. Verse 25, 18. Then Abigail made haste, took two hundred loaves and two bottles of wine and five sheep ready dressed and five measures of porch corn and a hundred clusters of raisins and two hundred kicks of figs and laid them on her hands. And she said unto her servant, go on before me. Behold, I come after you. But she told not her husband. And now listen to that girl. She done rebelled her husband. Now her husband had everything in motion for the family to be killed. And Abigail said, let me save the family because this man's actions is getting ready to mess us over. So listen to me. These people, this type of person that you can't tell anything because they know everything, that type of person left to themselves 
often has destroyed things. Now, I'm going to go over some points in these two sets of people. And once again, to you, those that are tuning in, you're listening to Apostle Ivory Hopkins. If the messages that I'm doing are blessing you real good, amen, we ask you to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Okay, and the title of the message is Two Conversations That Will Go Nowhere. Knowing when what you say changes nothing. I'm going to say it again. Two conversations that will go nowhere, knowing when what you say changes nothing. Now, the, that first class of person is people who will not hear you no matter what you say. Now, Jesus, when Jesus dealt with people like that, he knew what was in them, and he would not commit to some people. When I find out, I'm going to tell you all straight up, when I find out that you're the kind of person that, uh, that's not going to hear anything I got to say, I'm done. I'm done pursuing. I'm done bothering. I'm just done. Now, Brother Ivory, that means you're not going to deal with that person no more. You're not going to have mercy. If they start treating me right, if they start respecting me as I respect them, I will give them the same. But what I will not do is keep pursuing someone that is toxic and resentful towards you. Our conversation is done because I'm not going to be abused. Neither should you. Listen to me. Some of you take a lot of, 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 of you take a lot off of people and you keep chasing behind them as if they should change. My dear friend, I could even work on a job with you and know you don't like me. Only thing I want to make sure is as I get my check at the end of the day. As a counselor, I often deal with people who are so insecure, such people pleasers, that they almost wreck their emotions, stressed out, can't sleep, worrying all the time about someone that no matter what you say or do, they will not hear what you're saying no matter what. Now, let me go down the list on this. One, those who only come at you for what they want. In other words, they already have a motive. Jesus knew in Matthew, St. John chapter 2, verse 23, that many believed in him when they saw the miracles which he did, but Jesus did not admit himself to them. Now, wait a minute. Jesus should have just gave everybody the power of his miracle that he should have known they came for the anointing. Jesus knew they came for the motive, but they wanted nothing to do with the messenger. Sometimes there are people in your life who come for what they want out of your life, but they don't want to deal with you. Watch that. Because those type of people are usually users and lots of complainers. Number two, those who only deal with you until they see a flaw in your life. Did you hear me? Those who only deal with you until, I'm not talking about you blatantly living in sin. I'm talking about these people are not loyal for your help or for your healing. They only come for what they can get out of you. They only come from fish, loaves, and bread. But when you tell them, like Jesus did, You've got to be committed. You've got to be in all the way. They will abandon you. There are those who only deal with you until they see a flaw in your life. As long as you're on top. Let me tell y'all something. Listen to me, Yoshi Allen. Listen to this, my sister. I am not impressed when people are enamored at how long I've been ministering. Not even am I impressed. When son goes, oh, my God, he's the general, this, that, and the other. I appreciate the fact that you honor I've been in the ministry a long time. What I honor is I got your back. Would you have mine? If I failed, would you pick me up? If I if I needed help, would you help? Now, this is ain't me baiting the offering, baiting the offering. Oh, he's getting ready to go towards the offering. That's the way the preachers do. I ain't getting to ask you for nothing. But I'm telling you, that there were people in Jesus' life that one day, number three, these are the same type who cry Hosanna for Jesus and crucify him later. That's why Jesus did not commit himself to him. Be careful of folks who celebrate you one moment and ready to crucify you the next. Are you hearing me? Now, let me go to the next, the fourth one. When you see their actions like this towards you, believe what you're seeing. I'm going to say it again. When you see people who act like this, 
believe, I'm seriously, instantly believe what you're seeing. Your eyes are not lying to you. It is not <laughs> you making a mistake. You're seeing exactly what they feel about you. Matter of fact, I will say this. The great poet, Maya Angelou, and no, I'm not trying to raise her up with Jesus, but, but wisdom is wisdom. You know what Maya Angelou said one time? Most of y'all have heard this. When people show you who they really are, believe them the first time. When someone shows me that you have a disdain or that you're throwing shade at me some kind of way, I'm done with you. I am done. When someone keeps attacking and doesn't ask a question, listen, anybody who cares anything about you would ask you why or what are you doing rather than attack you straight up. Don't give you a chance to speak. Don't give you a chance to defend. They just go at you. They're not in your corner, Hoss. Are you hearing me? God bless you, Apostle Wanda. Apostle Wanda Wilkinson, I love you, woman of God. Hey, y'all, that's my friend. That is my friend. God bless you, soldier. Let me go to number five. This shows they really don't care for you, but what they want out of you. Are you hearing me? This listen, just know it. When you're dealing with some people, they they don't hang in there until they get what they want. And they will jump ship. Are y'all hearing me? Number six, Jesus often answered not a word that was his boundary when dealing with people who he knew felt some kind of way about him. I'm going to read that one again, y'all. Y'all hear me? Hmm? Hear this? Jesus often answered not a word. Some of y'all need to quit answering people. Some of y'all need that. There are some people that no matter what you say, their, their mind is already made up on you. They've heard the rumors. They've heard the lies. Or they got an opinion. And they're talking to you just so they can throw off on you or find something. Listen, I have, I have a rule that I have. Listen to what I'm going to say. And Apostle Wanda, I mean this with all my heart. Some people I don't even bother to answer, lest I make you important. Did you hear what I said? In other words, there are some people that are not worth the importance of engaging. Because if they ask a sincere question, I'm in. If they ask an honest question, I'm in. If they're coming from a pure heart, coming from a kind spirit, I'm in. But if you are mean-spirited and hateful, I'm done talking to you. When people, when dealing with people who talk down to you or throw jabs at you, that's what they feel about you, man. Are y'all hearing me? I'm going to say it again. Listen, when dealing with people who down talk to you or throw jabs at you, that's what they feel about you. It's sad. That's what you said. One person said, it's sad, especially when, let me read this. Praise the Lord. And thank you, my friend, for putting it up there. Gregory, thank you. He said, it's sad, especially when you've extended yourself further than you should have. Gregory's right. I just read a line from Gregory. Gregory, you spot on, baby. You got it, brother. Sometimes with these people, you extend yourself, but they don't extend themselves. So when dealing with people who talk down to you or throw dreams at you, that's what they really feel about you. Stop trying to chase and give them an answer. They're not looking for an answer. They already think they know it. Number eight, people who think they know more than you and talk to you only to prove what time they think they know more than you. And some of them can't wait to prove. Listen, these type of people mean to embarrass you, belittle you, and hurt you. So they're waiting for a mistake. They're waiting for you to fail. They're, they're looking at you. Why? Because they're because what makes them rise up and feel good about themselves is the fact that they're not listening at you anyway. They don't believe in you. They don't celebrate you. They're not caring about your well-being. They're throwing shade at you, and they mean it. Exactly. Listen, let me tell y'all something. I want y'all to hear this real, real good. Body of Christ, there are people in the body of Christ that are narcissistic. There are people in the body of Christ that are mean-spirited. Yes, God, I believe God can save, heal, and deliver them. But while they're on their journey of healing and deliverance, I'm not going to get in the way of that thing and act like it's not in them. There are people that, you know, wow, God of mercy. It's a lot I can say about this. Amen. There are people who do not think the way you do. You might be trying to sow peace. 
The Bible said, follow peace with all men, holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Listen, sometimes you got people that no matter what you do, they have an ulterior motive and they've judged you by a particular thing. Now, let me tell you the last one that we're getting to deal with, the type of people who knows everything. Oh, my God. Love. How many of y'all, hallelujah. What well, somebody said, you learned the hard way. How many of y'all have dealt with the type of people? They know everything. When I was a child, we had a, I had an uncle. This uncle of mine, he used to make the family so mad. I was a child. So as I was looking at this, I'm, I'm not going to say his name on, on this tape because I'm not going to do that. That ain't right. But uh, I remember this uncle, my aunt and them that raised me, they used to say, here he comes. Everything, everything you would mention, he, he, he knows everything. He would even lie sometimes about where he'd been, knowing he ain't never been there. But listen, you're wasting your conversation when you're talking to a person who knows everything. One, this type of person captures the conversation and dismisses anything you have to say. Whoop, child, did y'all hear that? Child, listen, all right, hey, Lopez, uh, Tabitha Lopez, brother's telling big truth, ain't he? I'm busting it out tonight. You know why I'm busting it? Why? Once again, as I started art early, Apostle Wanda, I tell people that I do counseling. And when I say I do counseling in their brain, all he does is counsel people and cast out demons. And all he's doing is charging for demons. I tell counseling, but not just deliverance. Not just deliverance. Are you hearing me? Many times I talk to people who are going through workplace issues, marital and relationship issues, folks that are almost getting ready to leave their church. And I try to talk to them to help them not to have to leave if it's necessary. Not to leave if it's not leave if it's necessary, but not and they need someone to talk to. I talk to the fivefold pastoral ministries to help them kind of light and uh, look over things. What is this? I'm not out there. Who the people for the numbers? Oh my God! Are you that scared that I'll get anything? Stop it! It's stupid because I'm doing more than what you know. My sessions are doing more than what you know, and I did not start yesterday. Are y'all here? Let me deal with the next. Let me do it. Okay. The type of person that knows everything is this type of person captures the conversation and dismisses anything you have to say. Like Nabal, everyone around them know they are like that, but cannot tell them because they know everything. Because I should have said, because he knows everything. He can't get the help that he needed because he knows everything. Now that's saying you need help, but you can't get the help because you know everything. Number three, there are wives, families, and friends that often step up and lets them make a mistake that they could warn them about, but they won't listen. There are often wife, friends, family, and friends that often could step up and help, but you can't. You, they can't step up and help you. You know why? You know everything. Got that? Are you hearing me? You know everything. Thank you very much, Sister Tabitha. Thank you very much. Amen. And she was saying, indeed, workplace. Thank you very much. Amen. When they get something in their minds, Jesus, when they get something in your mind, you can't move it with a clean. When they get an opinion of you, when they get a thought about what they think God is showing them, and God ain't showing them nothing, you can't change it with a crane. This person is dangerous. The danger of this type of person, they could cause others to be at risk who have to follow their lead. I'm going to say it again. And guess what? When the blind lead the blind, they all fall into the ditch. And this is true, whether it's relationships, marriage, church, or work. When the blind is leading the blind, the ones who have to be subject to that often falls into danger because of that person's obstinate inability to be told anything. The danger of this type of person, they could cause others to be at risk who have to follow their leading. What Abigail did, can we put some common sense on this uh, chapter with Abigail? What Abigail had to do was save the family. Right now, there are thousands of men and women that has to make decisions in the family. 
lest the one party destroys the whole family. And then said to say, I'll tell the truth and shame the devil. There are times that you couldn't say nothing and it did destroy the family. Are you hearing me? People that know everything, they most likely will follow the path of their own drum and, and walk themselves right into bondage when right beside them is help. Right beside them is wisdom. Let me go to number six. Many times, let me go ahead. Many times their partners, many times their mates and friends have to disregard them or they will mess everybody up. Did you hear that? I'm going to say it again. Many times their mates and friends have to disregard them or they will mess everybody up. Yep, that's right. They will cause everybody to fall. Abigail literally, Abigail literally took her husband's authority or the family would have been destroyed. Now, my question to you, what would you have done, wise soldier? I can tell you what Evelyn would have done. Evelyn would not allow me to do something that would destroy our entire family. Evelyn will step up and say, Ivory, I love you, but we cannot do this to our family. Are you hearing me? Many times, six, their mates and friends have to disregard them or they will mess everybody up. Yes, sometimes there are people that I pay no mind to. I have to disregard you because you're going to mess up everybody. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're doing. And then I can't listen to your voice. I would love to listen to everybody's voice, but there are some voices I don't listen to. Are you kidding me? I'm going to say it one more time. There are some voices you don't need to listen to. Mm. Abigail literally took her husband's authority or the family would have been destroyed. And was that rebellion on her part or self-preservation? Tell me, which one was it, soldiers? Well, I think she was a Jezebel. Huh? Saved the family, though, didn't she? Huh? Are you hearing me? I'm going to say it one more time. Yeah, yeah, that was a Jezebel spirit in Abigail. Well, what was in name a fool? It wasn't a Jezebel in her. That was the that was the spirit of a wife. That was a proverb thirty one wife who saved her family because she couldn't. She saved out of her family. Listen, she saved him as well. David did not kill kill Nabal. Drunkenness and craziness killed him, but David would have killed him had it not been for Abigail. Verse nine. When dealing with this type of stronghold, the answer is to do what you know is right, biblical, wise, and common sense. I'm going to say it again. When dealing with this type of stronghold in people's lives, do what you know is right, biblical, wise, and common sense. And I know common sense is something that many of us don't think that the Holy Ghost and common sense can dwell in the same temple. But my dear friend, they can. So I close out with this message that is dealing with, glory be to God, dealing with folks when you can't tell them anything. Amen? Lord, we praise you. I give God the praise. I thank the Holy Spirit. I thank the wisdom of God. I thank the grace of God for being able to share this message with you guys. Let me tell y'all something. As I said to you earlier, yes, ma'am, yes, sir. I do counseling, and it's not just demons. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. I do counseling in marriage, in relationships, workplace counseling. I do five-fold counseling, counseling that helps other ministers with churches and organizations Call me to bounce things off because of my many years of experience. And what I don't know, I say I don't know. Are you hearing me? Tonight is not a deliverance message. This here is a message of being knowing that you can safely set a boundary with the two kinds of people that you will not be able to get through. Two conversations that will go nowhere. Knowing when what you say changes nothing. I'm going to say it again. Knowing when what you say changes nothing. Well, look, I'm getting ready to get up off of here. I do want to take the time to, this is Ivory Hopkins Podcast. We want to thank you also. I want to thank a man, my grandson, Gary Flowers, who puts up all of the podcasts 
all over the world. I want to give him the kudos, Gary Flowers, uh, and higher dimension. That is his business. I want to thank you, Gary, for putting up all of my podcasts all over the world. And folks, on, uh, on the General of Deliverance podcast, I will be bringing up new content and as well as sharing it on Facebook Live and also on YouTube TV. Hey, man, also on my YouTube uh, and uh, you know, on, on my YouTube station, like, friend, and subscribe. You there on YouTube, once again, like, friend, and subscribe. We want to get out what we're doing for the kingdom to more people. And as I get ready to close, if this message has been a blessing to you, and if you would like to, now you don't have to do a thing, but if you would like to, you can cash up us a donation, any size, now, you got that? To General Ivory Hopkins. That's at our cash app, at General Ivory Hopkins. And if you don't feel led to send anything, just enjoy the word. Now, folks, guess what? Tell you like I always do. I want y'all always to remember, always to remember, God, he is watching. Love you, soldiers. I'm out. Bye-bye.